Now I need to move this chair closer to window to sit on it and watch a match. So I push, then it stops, then I push again, then it stops again after moving a little. Seems like this chair has a tendency to stop. Really, if you play carom, you know that you have to sprinkle some powder to make striker move faster. Powder reduces the friction. With less friction, same amount of push can make it travel further. By eliminating resistance, we can make that object move farther with same force. We all know friction is a resistance any object encounters when it moves on any surface. This is because grinding between object surface and surface it is traveling on. And no surface is absolutely smooth. Even eyes have microscopic imperfection. So, object doesn't stop. Something make it stop. That is the grinding between two surfaces. Believe me or not, there are many space bodies which are traveling for millions of years. Something made them move because a stone on grass never moves on its own. But after that, these space bodies keep moving and moving and moving because there is no resistance to stop them. So what I want to say, still object remains still and moving object try to maintain its state of motion unless something changes their state of motion. That's something is force. So object doesn't have tendency to stop. Galileo first introduced the idea that object has a tendency to resist changes in its state of motion. This tendency is called inertia. This inertia can be explained with some classic examples in real life. When bus stops, suddenly you tend to fall because bus stopped but your body tries to maintain its forward motion. That's because of inertia. You actually have to apply force to prevent yourself from falling. That is to stop yourself like you pull your body backward against the forward motion holding the iron bar above your head. Don't you? If a car takes sudden right turn, you are thrown to left. Because car was moving in a straight line, then it changes its course but your body wants to keep moving in its previous course. Because of inertia, it seems like you are thrown to left but your body is actually maintaining previous course because, listen carefully, because it resists change in its state of motion. Everybody resists change in its state of motion. Without further ado, we bring the gentleman who should have the finishing words. Isaac Newton. An object at rest stays at rest, an object in motion stays in motion with same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Unbalanced force part is very important because if net force is zero then it doesn't make any change. Like two persons pushing this box with same force but from opposite direction. So both forces are cancelling out each other, right? These are balanced forces as they are cancelling out each other or balancing each other. So net force is zero. If one of them apply more force then both forces would not cancel out each other entirely. So this is unbalanced force. Unbalanced forces make changes. If you are pushing an object, but friction and inertia are cancelling out all the forces, it is no use. Your push has to overcome the resistance to make the object move, means your push must not get entirely balanced by the resistant forces. So unbalanced force is required to make an object move or change its state of motion. Now inertia solely depends on mass, means more the mass, more it will resist the changes. That's why it is harder to make a heavy object move, because it resists more. For same reason, it is harder to stop a moving heavy object. 
actually we can easily correlate it with daily observation but how force affects state of motion and how much changes can it make for that we need sir isaac newton again with his second law of motion but let's do it on next lesson so thank you and bye